Ladies and gentlemen, let me now talk to the facts. Number one is whether the minister has a mandate to make such a decision. As a minister responsible for local government, I understood that the question before the nation and related to the issue concerning the proposed merger of Metsimaholo and Nwate municipalities is a matter concerning two local government structures. I therefore had to act. I received information that the people of Zamdela are protesting against the proposed major of Metsimaholo and Nwate, and that in the process, property was being damaged, there was random looting, people were not going to work, children were not going to school, and that there was a total collapse of order in the area, and all on reasons associated with differences on a matter that had to do with two local government structures. I had to act. I was told by reliable sources that there was no one person on the ground offering a solution to stop the carnage, except for our police officials, who were working so hard to manage the situation, but so limited in providing a solution as what was demanded at the time was an answer in the area of local government. I had to act. And we have appealed to the leadership. I interacted with leaders of the community on arrival. And when I'm talking of leaders of the community, I'm referring to those people who are leading the concerned residents of Zamdel. I'm talking about the councillors in the municipality. I'm talking about MECs in the provincial government of the Free State. In that in engagement, there were serious allegations. And in those allegations, there was no solution. There was no time even to verify or validate all what parties will be suggesting and indicating as the cause for the situation. I had to act. I bounced my decision at that consultation with all these leaders, and there was no objection. I had to act. What, therefore, does this decision mean? The decision is meant to say that part of the preparatory activities towards the 2016 local government elections is suspended. And that is that part that deals with the changes of municipal boundaries. Until we are satisfied that the manner in which it is done is so transparent that it leaves no space for people to find faults in the process or reduce to a minimum. Until the reasons given by those who propose the changes are thoroughly conversed with the people to the extent that they see the advantages for such changes. <coughs> Under the circumstances that those who have to take the decisions to change the boundaries are satisfied that the people have been thoroughly consulted. In a situation that the people are thoroughly prepared to participate in the processes that may lead to changes in the municipal boundaries, and they understand the situation well, given sufficient options, the right to appeal and treat it fairly. Now let's refer to the task team that I, I, I mentioned. We announced a ministerial task team last year and mandated it to address some of the issues we identified as needing attention in the demarcation processes in the areas of one, the reasons for considering changes of municipal boundaries every time we go for elections, mindful of the fact that changes are actually associated with feelings of suspicions as sensitive 
So if we have to do that every time or consider doing that every time we go for elections, as a minister responsible for local government and in that responsibility to ensure stability, we had to be convinced that uh, there are compelling reasons to do that. That's why that became one of the issues that the task team had to do. Two, whether the public participation processes is managed in an environment where all the people have equal say in influencing possible changes in the municipal boundaries. Whether the system is not open to manipulation Maybe I should simplify so that I don't use big English. Whether the system is not open to hijacking, where the changes may only suit certain individuals who may be more vocal or advantaged by certain circumstances. Whether all changes to municipal boundaries will lead to a better state of a municipality to deliver the services rendered by the people. Having dealt with this, the task team will then report to the minister with a view to provide the necessary remedies in case there are challenges. The decision by the minister in the case we are dealing with now, and particularly the involvement of the task team, is informed by the realization that these questions, either at the perception level or as a reality, exist. Now let's look at the way forward. The demarcation task team will lead in facilitating and monitoring that all what needs to be done is indeed done in all the areas where there are possible changes in municipal boundaries, working with all relevant structures and accomplishing their work by end of February. 2013. The team will also facilitate and monitor that all unresolved demarcation related questions are given due considerations by end of February 2013.